Hello, nerds. This is the uh, music section that has been taken from the main channel at Generally Nerdy here on the YouTubes, or you can go find it on Rumble or wherever else. Uh, this is the music section. It was taken from a much larger video that I like to call The Weekend Nerddom, but that's available on the main channel. While you're here, don't forget to stick around afterwards because there's a lot of exclusive content on this channel that only exists here. So go check out some of that once you're done here. Either way, let's talk about the music music news, shall we? So that means we got to start with the music news. Uh, music news is we've got a bit. We've got a bit. So one follow-up uh, and, and, you know, uh, co correction follow-up is neither technically speaking. It's a kind of sort of a follow-up because we've talked about this previously uh, in previous years, and that is the Grammys. They happened and pretty much nobody cared. Well, conservative media cared because, yeah, that Sam Smith saw, or that Sam Smith performance, rather, was uh, silly. Like, whatever, man. I, I don't understand. I don't understand the, the, the conservative media. I don't get it. I don't understand why that was such a... Like, it's music. It's somebody being edgy. Please, just... Don't pay attention like 98% of the rest of the population of this country did. Yeah? Okay, fair enough. Moving on. New music in today's episode. We have one piece of new music to react or review or whatever these are. Uh, real quick, uh, Slipknot surprised the world with a new single that is not on the end so far. The most recent record that they put out, this song is not on there. The name of the song is Bone Church. The video is utilizing footage that they shot when they made the Yen video, so nothing kind of too crazy. The song is another kind of softy. It's a little more atmospheric. I have an appreciation for the atmospheric Slipknot stuff. That is for sure. And I think a large part of the reason why I have an appreciation for it is because then the aggressive and heavy stuff just it hits that much harder. Because if they don't do the softer atmospheric things, then that stuff starts to bleed into the heavy stuff. And the heavy stuff isn't as heavy as it should be so we should want more stuff like that well i always want more stuff like this just because i really dig a great atmospheric song and slipknot knows how to do that and i'm rambling but go check out bone church it's a great track let's move on all right so that brings us to the live music section tours and festivals uh this is this is a lot there's a lot going on as far as live music since we are at the beginning of the year everybody's trying to get out there uh first up we have the ink carceration music and tattoo festival this one is going to be huge it's going uh, it's happening july 14th 15th and 16th headliners for each of those nights limp biscuit slipknot and pantera that's right those are your headliners each night so cold chamber volbeat hatebreed lamb of god in this moment Mushroom Head, Megadeth, and so many more bands are also going to be at this festival. I did not see how much tickets are going to cost because, good lord, it's probably a whole lot of money. But uh, it is, again, July 14th, 15th, and 16th. You can find a link down in the description. Let's continue on. Next up, we're talking about Demon Hunter. They have announced uh, a new tour. 20 Years in Exile is the name of the tour. Uh, they are going to be supported from Opponent. Never heard of Opponent, but if they're playing with Demon Hunter, they're probably worth at least a, a quick listen. Uh, the, the tour starts April 14th in Lawrence, Kansas, runs through April 29th in Nashville, Tennessee. And again, links in the description. Uh, next, we have Electric Callboy, formerly Eskimo Callboy, but, you know, people got upset at the Eskimo word. Uh, and so this is their first North American tour since the coup. This is the first time they've been to the States since, you know, they were allowed back in the States. Uh, it's going to be running from August 25th in Portland, Oregon, all the way through September 15th in New York City, New York. Links in the description. I couldn't find support for this one. I have no idea who they're touring with. It very well could just be them, kind of like the Slaughter to Prevail show I went to a couple months back. So, uh, interesting, and yeah, it is what it is. Let's move right along. Uh, this is probably the one that I am 
the most excited about, and that is Whitechapel. Whitechapel has just announced a tour, and the support on this tour is also quite noteworthy. We have Arch Spire, Entheos is probably the only band I don't know on this bill, and Sign of the Swarm. Sign of the Swarm, you might remember because they shared vocalists for a hot second. Well, their ex-vocalist is now also the ex-vocalist of Lorna Shore. Signs of the Swarm is, is really good. I'm kind of surprised they're getting the bottom of this bill. I figure they'd be right behind Whitechapel, but I don't know. Arch Spire's pretty noteworthy as well. So, yeah, take it or leave it. Just, I have never heard of Entheos. Maybe I'm just out of the loop with this band, but whatever. Uh, the tour starts April 14th in Atlanta, Georgia. Home where my heart is. Uh, runs through May 13th in Nashville, Tennessee. Link in the description. And then our final piece of touring news has to do with a group that actually, we I don't know if we've ever talked about these guys on the show before, and that is Death Grips. That's right, the crazy, like, avant-garde, hip-hop, aggro, punk, whatever you want to call Death Grips. Uh, they are coming out of hibernation. It has been four years since they have gone on tour. Uh, this is going to be the first time they've done anything since before the pandemic. Uh, they are going to be starting May 4th, Portland, Oregon. And then the, the first leg of the tour ends May 21st. They're going to take a little bit of a break and then they come back going through the U.S. and Canada until October 7th. All right, so now we just got some regular old news. Uh, we got Linka Park putting out new music, finally. Well, I don't know. Uh, hold that excitement momentarily. This is not exactly new music. This is uh, a song that they recorded back when they were doing the Meteora record, which was their second major label record. Uh, so it's kind of a little old. The name of the track is Lost. It will feature Chester Bennington on vocals. Yes, it will. Uh, it is set to be released this coming Friday, so the 10th of February. Uh, and, and honestly, that's all we really know about it so far. So we will talk about this next week once the track has released and we'll do a quickie reaction to it. So stay tuned for that. Our next piece of regular old news comes from Botch. We've talked about these guys before. We're talking about them again and I'm super excited about this. So we have two pieces of news about Botch. First up, we have another album reissue. Previously, they released or they reissued uh, what was it? We Are the Romans came out in 99. Now they're reissuing their 98 record, American Nervoso. Uh, it will be released in both LP and CD format. So if you are a record collector, go find this reissue because I'm sure it's going to be just as amazing as the last. And our second piece of botch news is uh, even though previously re reported this was not going to be happening, there are, in fact, going to be more reunion shows. Right now, we only have the three that I believe we previously talked about. Those are all sold out. However, the band has stated that there will be more reunion shows announced, quote, soon. What that means, how soon is soon, only time will tell. We will definitely be keeping tabs on this. That is what we got for regular ass news. So let's get into music suggestion for this week. We are still talking about Botch. The record that they reissued previously is the recommendation for this episode. And that is We Are The Romans. This album, I mean, if you like Dillinger Escape Plan, if you like Converge, if you like that kind of abrasive kind of stuff that's really kind of off the wall and angry and just uh, abrasive is the best word. It is hard to listen to, and that's kind of why I love it. Uh, these guys were proto of that scene. They kind of kick-started the scene that birthed both uh, Dillinger and Converge. So you owe it to yourself, if you like that kind of stuff, to check out Botches' We Are the Romans. Either the original or the reissue. Doesn't matter. They're both great. Once again, nerds, that was a short section that comes from a longer video on the main channel, Generally Nerdy, YouTube or Rumble. Take your pick. I'm on both. You can go find it there. You can go find all of the other news there as well. 
including the live episode. We do a live episode roughly once a week, every Friday evening. You can join the conversation live, or you can just leave comments here on this one or any of the other ones you find on the Clips channel. Thank you very much, nerds. We've got other news to discuss in other videos, but while we're getting out of here, don't forget that if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here.